Ukrainian soldiers welcome US president's decision on HIMARS. It is fair to hit bases inside Russia. If Russians are using their weapons in Ukraine, then it should be fair for Kyiv forces to strike Russian territory. It doesn't mean Ukrainian troops are going to use the weapons against civilian targets, just military targets, Ukrainian soldiers who fight in Vovchansk told The Telegraph. In conversations with the newspaper, Ukrainian defenders were unanimous that Joe Biden had now made the right decision, albeit belatedly, to give Ukraine permission to use US-supplied HIMARS to strike inside Russia. They said that Ukrainian commanders knew where key Russian targets across the border were located but had been unable to strike them due to limits on the strikes. Ukrainian soldiers predicted that hitting logistics, air bases, artillery and bases would badly prevent Russians from advancing deeper into Kharkiv Oblast. Since the ban on HIMARS use was eased, Ukraine launched attacks on Belgorod city, used by the invaders as a military base for strikes on Ukrainian objects and civilians. Despite the influx of Western ammunition beginning to reach Ukrainian lines after a lengthy political holdup to US supplies, Ukraine's forces are still heavily outgunned. If we use 10 shells, they send 50 back, said one artillery gunner. He predicted that allowing strikes inside Russia would be beneficial, though he noted that cross-border strikes would likely constitute a small portion of Ukraine's overall targeting. We need to kill Russians so they don't come here. One of the soldiers claimed, Ukrainian troops still face the threat of Russian artillery superiority and glide bombs which can be launched by Russian jets from beyond the range of Ukraine's air defences. A growing number of European countries, including Britain and France, had already given Kyiv permission to use Western missiles against Russian military targets before they had crossed the border. Jens Stoltenberg, the head of NATO, also put rare diplomatic pressure on the White House, declaring that, in light of how this war has evolved, the time has come to consider some of these restrictions to enable the Ukrainians to really defend themselves. Nuclear bomb proposed to be dropped on the Netherlands at Kremlin propagandists' show. Russian State Duma Deputy Andrei Gurulev suggested dropping a nuclear bomb on the Netherlands to bring Europe to its knees. Gurulev said this on air of the propaganda Russia One TV channel. According to the deputy, such an attack will be able to bring Europe to its knees because according to Gurulev, 50 to 60 percent of Europe's hydrocarbon supply is in the Netherlands. Somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of Europe's supply of hydrocarbons is in Holland. Can you imagine in Holland on the coast? The military call it a creamy target. We understand perfectly well how to inflict critically unacceptable damage to bring Europe to its knees, and it's a matter of a day, within a minimum consumption of nuclear warheads, Gurulev said. When Russian propagandist Vladimir Solovyov reiterated that the strike must be specifically nuclear, Gurulev said, it necessarily must be specifically weapons of mass destruction. I think that this determination is something we need to show, Gurulev concluded. Since invading Ukraine in 2022, President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly made veiled threats to use tactical nuclear weapons against the West. Russia has tended to raise the nuclear specter when its invasion of Ukraine has hit obstacles or when other countries make new pledges of support for Ukraine. After Ukraine liberated large swathes of its territory in late 2022, Putin conceded that the war is going to take a while and warned of the increasing threat of nuclear war. In February last year, Putin announced that Russia would suspend participation in the New START Treaty, a key nuclear arms reduction agreement with the United States, the last remaining pact that regulates the world's two largest nuclear arsenals. Putin said Russia would not be the first to test nuclear weapons, but would do so in the event of a US test. Russia calls US an enemy for first time. Moscow's rhetoric is hardening. In a recent address to reporters, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov referred to the United States as an enemy signaling a potential hardening of Moscow's rhetoric. It remains unclear if the use of the word signals an official policy change, as the spokesman had previously argued that only President Vladimir Putin can make such decisions. Washington's refusal to allow former U.S. Marine, U.N. weapons inspector and journalist Scott Ritter to travel to St. Petersburg was the latest manifestation of the rabid campaign to prevent U.S. citizens from interacting with the Russian Federation, which would only be understandable if it was somehow related to his former intelligence status, Peskov told journalists. We are now an enemy country for them, much like they are for us, 
Peskov said, while acknowledging that restrictions applying to former intelligence officers, especially on travel to a hostile country, are common across the world. The Kremlin previously called the United States and other Western countries that have supported and armed Ukraine and imposed sanctions on Moscow as unfriendly states or opponents. The shift in language follows Washington's decision to let Kiev use American-supplied weapons against targets inside Russia beyond what the U.S. considers Ukrainian territory. In March, Peskov noted that Moscow objects to U.S. officials who insult President Putin, but that in general there is no anti-American sentiment in Russia. He expressed hope that sooner or later the realization that the peoples of America and Russia are not enemies will eventually come. Putin said in January that the elites of Western countries were the true enemies of Russia, while Ukraine is a mere tool in their hands. The point is not that they are helping our enemy, but that they are our enemy. The Russian president said, arguing that the conflict between Moscow and Kiev was orchestrated by Western elites who seek to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia.